Thanks for sticking with us. We've been buzzing about finally seeing 2020 behind us and what's up next with Dr. Marissa Richmond. And now joining us to continue the conversation is Stephen Adair from Glendale United Methodist Church. Great to have you with us, Stephen. Good to see you. Great to be here again. Cool. Thank you so very much. We thought we would sort of uh, shift focus a little bit from politics and whatnot and sort of focus on faith and, and, and how, th how you guys have been you know, sort of dealing with this pandemic. But I do want to start with the same question um, that Pam left for us. Um, she's not able to be here with us tonight, but she wanted to know how everyone was sort of dealing with their pandemic stress. Um, have you developed any new habits, new hobbies, anything of interest? Um, yeah, well, first off, eating too much. I think that we can... <laughs> identify with that um but uh no, in all seriousness um so i play on um hot mess uh sports league yeah uh, here in nashville we were we were very fortunate enough to be able to actually start playing again after quite a long break um through this last year so um we got to play kickball this last fall um so that was really nice to come together on sundays and do that again um and in a safe way um so they put all those procedures into place of course but um Another another big thing and probably the, the topic here uh, for this um, time is is being in the sanctuary at my church, which is Glendale United Methodist um, every Sunday. And then, of course, finding ways throughout the week to get out of the house to go do something over there to clean something up or decorate. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, finding so, yeah. that excuse to get out and do something, it, 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 whatever it is, Absolutely. is a big one. And and to your credit, yes, I, I missed Hot Mess. I played for a little while, and it is fun. And I, I did see some folks out playing, and we, uh, we were going to go catch a game, and it just didn't end up working out. But I'm so glad to see that they were able to, to continue doing a little bit um, in the fall. Um, have you accomplished anything new? Um, uh, again, Pam's not here, but she 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 begged me to remind everyone or let them know that she learned CPR in the last few weeks over <laughs> during this pandemic. And I'm like, well, I don't think we can all as aspire to such levels, but any Anything new that you've accomplished or created in the last few months? Um, I think probably the, the big thing is since we're all at home, um, we've uh, we've actually it was I don't know what month it was. It was during the pandemic. Uh, we got the house painted outside. We've done landscaping in the back. So it's really we've just kind of focused since we're here so much. Yeah. Um, my partner actually has transitioned from uh, you know school to or doing graduate school um, virtually. Um, and then I'm working from home. Uh, so there's just a lot of home time uh, here uh, all the time with both of us. So might as well make it as nice as possible. I'm so I'm so sort of jealous to hear you say that because I, I wish I had that drive. I've been in my home for 15 years and after a while, it's sort of that excitement of creating and painting goes away. So I, I've, I've not done nearly as yeah. much of that, but you, you give me credit or you give me a, a good, good excuse to get started again. Um, so how has, you know, you mentioned earlier and you know, we've all seen sort of the ups and downs as far as coverage goes with, uh, with people being able to attend church, new ways to go to church, new ways to, to attend Sunday school. My partner's parents who were staunch, you know, in-person people have in begun to enjoy the, the benefit of being able to go to Sunday school remotely. Um, how has your faith helped and what have you seen the church, in particular yours, and, and even outside of your church or your denomination even, how have you seen them dealing with things and sort of going into this, this new year of 2021? Yeah, so um, I actually work for the denomination, um, and my team at United Methodist Communications actually um, helps local churches do marketing and communication. So you can imagine that when the pandemic hit, and it's the shift from stop meeting in person in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings, that's quite a quite a quite an issue for most of our churches, especially a lot of them. And this is probably across denominations um, that um, you know had to shift. Or, or learn or, or do things different, way differently than they had always done them before. Um, so just, I've seen a lot of um, innovation from churches that probably wouldn't have done some of these things like live streaming or, or even recording services or whatnot for another 10 years if it was on their own. Um, however, this has forced them into it. I think, you know, a lot of our churches across the board um, probably still are struggling with that or, you know, especially if the, the ones that have older congregations and, and making sure that they're um, their congregation members are connected or whatnot. Um, but, you know, I've, I've just seen a lot of excitement um, in, in, in the ability to even reach new people that you would have never reached before um, because we've all been forced into this um, uh, virtual space. Um, luckily at Glendale, we've been doing uh, live stream worship for, for some years, but I will say even a church that's been doing it for years, we had to upgrade our equipment because you just don't think of the sound and the technical stuff that when everybody's watching, it's so much more important for it to be a better experience uh, for everything, for everyone. You know, I think some churches have really struggled with the whole in-person versus, you know, people wanting to come back into the sanctuary. Uh -huh. And that's been kind of a whole divide um, in a way, um, depending on which side you sit on. Um, you know, I'm lucky at Glendale. 
our people are just fine just sitting at home watching from the comfort of their own home and aren't pushing to be back in the sanctuary yesterday. Um, but I have heard struggles of other churches um, that the people are, are, are angry um, and upset that churches aren't open for business as usual. Well, I, I thank you for addressing that at the end there, because I was going to ask, uh, you know, it seems as though you guys have been able to be successfully still open and still having a congregation be involved. And, and you know, and maybe some smaller churches, as you even mentioned, might have more difficulty doing that. But, it, it, you know, there's no substitute for being there in person. But clearly, there is a way to continue on without having to endanger the, the, the members, right? I mean, that that's just, you've proven it. I mean, as have many other churches. Yeah. So, you know, it just seems odd yeah. that so many others would, would find it sort of a hindrance in, in a way. You know, I... I think our call, you know, especially as United Methodists, our call is to do no harm. That's one of our three simple rules from John Wesley. Um, and, you know, I think that as Christians across the board, like we're supposed to, you know, help one another, keep each other safe. Um, and I think when we, when people put a traditional a view of we have to be in that sanctuary to worship God, that then something's wrong or we're not being able to do what we want to do. Um, it just puts us at risk. It puts each other at risk. And that just makes really no sense um, to me. Um, and, and churches still can thrive outside of the sanctuary. Like, I think one of our phrases back in the day was, you know, churches outside of the building or churches out of the walls. I don't remember. That's not exactly right. But, <laughs> you know, but it happen anywhere. And right. I wish more churches kind of take that on um, and run with it a little bit better. I mean, we're reaching people at Glendale in different countries that are tuning into worship that would have never done that before, probably. Um, and people outside the community that are even tithing to the church because they found, they found this church community home. And it's mainly because we're inclusive and affirming um, that that's, that's happened. And, it's, and I see that people in kind of more rural areas don't have churches, even if they were physically able to be there on a Sunday morning, that would, that would welcome and love them for just who, for, for who they are. Well, I, I hate to just cut you off because, I mean, this is, I, I could, we could talk about this forever. And Chuck, poor Chuck, didn't get to speak much during this segment, but I know he's planning to do a full show kind of devoted to, to, to religion and sort of post-pandemic world coming up. So I, we'll definitely have more time to talk later, but I've got to get out of here right now. We've got to go to commercial break. Thank you so very much. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our guest and this week's Entertainment Outlook after the break. <laughs> 